Okay, uh, our second speaker um, is Farah Kidwa Khan, um, who's going to talk about a roadmap to artificial intelligence, methods for designing and building AI ready data to promote fairness. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm Farah, as Andrew introduced, and um, I'm really happy to be here. I've learned a lot today with all the wonderful presentations and some very key data-centric points that were raised in the panel discussions. Uh, so I wanna bring our attention to the importance of good quality data for um, AI modeling. Uh, I'm happy to present uh, on behalf of my team, uh, our methods for designing and building AI-ready data to promote fairness. Uh, my team is the Veterans Aging Cohort Study. So what is AI-ready data? Um, by AI-ready data, we're really talking about the foundational data that is used as input for AI models. Uh, readiness indicates completion of data management, integration, and curation to improve data quality. Some aspects of high quality data, as we know, are accessibility, reproducibility, completeness, and uh, of course, reliability. So we're, we work on all these tasks to achieve, uh, you know, the goal of ultimate goal of fairness. And uh, one of the big parts of doing that is to avoid establishing or reinforcing bias. And identifying bias is much easier in high quality data. So we evaluated methods for preparing electronic health record data to reduce bias before application of AI. We created methods for transforming raw data to a data framework for applying machine learning and natural language processing techniques for predicting falls and fractures. As you see on the figure, um, this is a cyclic process and uh, some of the major broad Key points uh, included here are standardizing data cleaning strategies, validating the cleaning procedures, mitigating uh, missing data, and then maintaining and updating metadata and making the code publicly available. And then of course, including all these strategies in uh, public interfacing um, publications. So we use data from the electronic health record data from Department of Veterans Affairs. Um, as a lot of you may know, the VA is a, a goldmine for researchers. There are 9 million veterans in care and more than 6 million with meaningful use data. We have over 20 years of longitudinal data, um, which is very useful for research, uh, and the largest HIV cohort in North America with uh, more than 60,000 veterans diagnosed with HIV and uh, demographically matched people without HIV. Mm -hmm. uh, the map on the slide um, shows us uh, the locations of the VA healthcare facilities, which are, I believe, greater than 1,300 in the entire country. So this pyramid represents the steps taken to build foundational data as input to a machine learning model. So starting from the base uh, and a very broad overview, um, we drew uh, data from the VA Corporate Data Warehouse, um, which is a SQL database, a, a collection of many SQL databases. And um, some examples of domains are radiology report in this context. And then we do extensive data mining for uh, preliminary insights uh, all the way to creating our analytic variables. Uh, we created many algorithms for extracting meaningful context. Um, the NLP algorithm was part of that and the output of which was fed into the machine learning algorithm. So what did we find? Um, process data yielded improved accuracy. The performance of AI was dependent on the data quality. We lost data in the EHR network if specialized algorithms were not applied for cleaning. And the number of concepts from NLP output were much improved with process data. So as you can see in the tables, uh, the table one is the output for the machine learning algorithm. And as you see, the process data prediction is almost double uh, compared to the raw data predictions. The table two is NLP output for false, um, where you also can see in the process data column, the number of concepts is much higher than that of the raw data. 
Uh, what did we find? Uh, additionally, missing nests obviously improved by integrating different data sources, uh, which is a big task in itself. Uh, diagnosis codes improved by including visits from all locations of care. Number of radiology reports increased with integrating data. And variables like race, ethnicity, and diagnosis were sensitive to missingness. The table three on the top uh, represents different race uh, that we have in the data. And as you can see, uh, the process data better represents almost all the different races. And the missingness is uh, much higher in raw data and much lower in the process column. Uh, table four also represents the ICD codes, which is the diagnosis codes, and uh, same results here. Uh, they're dramatically improved in the process data compared to raw data. So the key takeaways from here are, um, you know, algorithmic bias can introduce inequity in clinical decision making. Uh, if we have incorrect representation, we can make incorrect conclusions. Curated data preparation improves AI output. And fairness is an evolving target, obviously, that starts before AI models are even created. So I want to conclude by um, saying that data preparation practices must be standardized, diversify research team and teams and expertise that always helps in bringing in different kinds of um, input, and then validating cleaning procedures, creating and maintaining metadata, and including fair data practices, which um, here means findability, accessibility, interoperability, and reproducibility um, also helps us achieve um, reduction in bias. More of our work is available on, available on Cypher, which is a centralized integrated phenomics um, resource for the Department of Veterans Affairs. Thank you. Great work. Uh, do we have any initial questions from the audience? Okay, I will start with one. Um, how did you all decide like which data is which data components you all were going to kind of target for either missingness evaluation or you know other types of pre-processing steps, uh, kind of in your fairness pipeline? So that uh, typically depends on the research question, um, but demographics is a big part of um, mostly all research studies. And um, we do some initial uh, data analysis, preliminary data analysis to see what things are looking like. And that is often indicative of where, um, indicative of areas that need uh, work in terms of curated uh, data practices. I have a question from over here. Yep. Hello. Yes. So you mentioned that if specialized algorithms weren't applied, some data tends to get lost in the AHR pipeline. I can you just go more in depth as to which types of data usually tend to get lost in the pipeline without the algorithm algorithms? Right. So I think that is also very um, domain specific, but I'll give you an example from the VA. Um, so for example, every veteran travels, typically travels to different sites of care. And uh, there is, there's a lot of missingness in the data if they are um, if data is not integrated from all different locations. Um, so that is one example. Um, there's a lot of missingness there. Or um, some many times we have to integrate uh, data from CMS because um, care sought outside of the VA could be missing, and then we could be missing on key points related to that. Thank you. I'm just one more question. Is the uh, VA working on creating some type of kind of fairness pipeline at large? I know you all worked kind of in this particular cohort of HIV patients, but is that is it there are plans for kind of building out the infrastructure to be able to kind of apply these techniques to the entire group? Um, I think there are there is a lot of work going on in terms of reduction in bias, but that's a component of fairness. So uh, I haven't really seen um, anything at the top level uh, addressing that itself. Uh, but I think it, there's definitely a drive towards it. Thank you very much.